Hello! How's everyone doing on this fine Wednesday? Are we Wednesday? We might be Tuesday. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, we're Wednesday because I was going to try to do a trashy Tuesday uh, journal page yesterday and it didn't happen. That's right. All right. So I'm kind of, I got a bunch of stuff going on and I'm just sitting here having my coffee, uh, sorting some images and things, ephemera. And I was like, you know what? Why don't I just turn the camera on? And uh, yeah. I like watching people sort things, so why not? And I got a few things I want to talk about anyway. Um, well, first, I want to talk about this. Um, just a little tip. So what I do is when I'm going through images and things, like I have a big, this is just a big, like, um, like a Rubbermaid tote kind of thing um, that I put images I cut out of magazines in. And like, as I cut them, I just dump them in here. Um, and then I sort them after. So... A lot of it's fussy cut because I've been doing a lot of fussy cutting lately. Uh, some of it's not quite fussy cut, but you know. Anyway, I just put everything in here and then I go through and sort it. And um, what I'm sorting it into today is um, ephemera to pack away. Um, ephemera to go into my ephemera, my ephemera folder thing. I'll show you here. <clears throat> this is what I had um, created as a fix for me moving. Um, so normally my ephemera is stored in two four drawer filing cabinets and I have an extensive ephemera and image collection. Um, even before I knew what to do with them, I was collecting images. I was just, it was just a thing. It was like, I don't know. Anyway, um, yeah, so I created this out of this like page protector, like notebook kind of thing. Um, I got this at the dollar store. I believe you could buy it at like any like office supply store or whatever. So I've created, yeah, it's like a little file folder kind of thing. Like, and it's just images that I was like, you know what? I want to leave these out because I might want to create with them in the next little while. So, um, yeah, I've got a pile to put into the, into these, file into these. And then I have a pile, um, I get my little chocolate box covers um, as I'm going through these images. And these are these are images that are going to, going to go into my monochromatic glue books. So I always sort those out. And then I have another little one here and this is scraps. So interesting scraps that I've saved and they're just gonna go into my scrap bin. <clears throat> I like to kind of sort everything out. Like I'll cut out of a magazine and just kind of, yeah, put them in a bin and then sort them out as I go or sort them out afterwards all kind of all at once. So what I'm also doing is I've got it I've got um I always kind of keep in my mind um things that I'm gathering things for. So if I'm gathering things for a specific journal like theme journal, which I am, but I pack most of those away. So what I do in that case is say I'm going through stuff and say I've got, for example, I want to make in the near future, I want to make say a bee journal, um, a New York City journal and a travel journal. So I'll have in my mind that, or I mean, you can make a list, whatever, post it, that those are the themes I'm collecting for. So when I'm going through this ephemera, these pictures, I'll pull them out and I store them usually in these folders, these plastic folders. Um, this is a big 12 by 12, which came from generations, but I mean, you can get those not in 12 by 12 maybe, but you can get like, you know, regular size paper ones from the dollar store and things. Um, so yeah, and I'll just put a piece of washi on it saying which theme it is. And uh, yeah, but I also collect, um, I collect for pages I want to make too. So I've got little bits and pieces of things that I'm like, okay, I want to make a journal page for that. So um, yeah, what I do is, for example, these, these were the little, if you remember my little, um, it's a little phonetic joke or whatever. I thought these were hilarious, little pizza pop, um, the little ends of the boxes. So I'm like, you know what? I want to make a journal page out of that because it's funny. And so like, then I found this and I was like, that would go really cool with that. So I just kind of set those aside. This one is, it started as a Trashy Tuesday thing. Uh oh, is she stuck to that? Oh no, that glue is so strong. I gotta do something with that glue. Um, yeah, this came off, this was from, uh, I had saved from tra for Trashy Tuesday. Over Christmas, we had a box of clementines and darling clementines, like, oh my darling clementine. I'm just gonna put a little bit of washi tape on that actually. 
while I'm right here so it won't stick to everything like it has been doing. I don't want it to ruin like it's stuck to my little the picture of the lady. So I'm just going to stick a little. This should fix it for now. You watch the washi tape won't stick to it. Everything else sticks to it. There. There, just to protect so things don't stick to it. That's, yeah, something to keep in mind, too. If you have, a, if, you, if you're collecting trash or junk journal, be mindful of the glue. Yeah, so I'm like, hey, Darling Clementines, I want to do a page for that. So I went through and I found a couple, couple pictures of oranges and this cool citrusy photo. And I wanted, I knew I wanted a girl to be Darling Clementine. So this post-it, she's from like a magazine article. Isn't she, or post-it, pin up. <laughs> A vintage pinup so that's pretty um then I had this cool little like instant breakfast drink thing and yeah and then some bits and pieces some scraps that I might want to work into it and as you can see they're kind of random but I think I'm going to be able to make them work so I'm kind of putting those together what I do with these if I'm not making the page right away um I will show you I here this is a good one my trashy journal I will take them and paper clip them together. So this one I had gone through, I found this cool watercolor thing. It was from like, I think a watercolor book. And then this word, probably from the same book. And I even went as far as to choose the page I want to put it on in here. Um, Cause it's the perfect size. So I'm kind of gathering things. I'm like, okay, I want those two. And then I wanted some scraps of book pages. I think I'll kind of do like a background in book pages anyway. So I put those together like that. So they're in there when I want to, uh, when I want to work on that page. Same thing. Oops, sorry. Uh, this is my writing journal. So same thing. I've gathered a few, um, I want to do a page. I don't remember which image to start with, but it usually starts with an image. Um, I want to do this page like blacks, whites, and grays kind of thing. And I think it might have started with the birds. Where are the birds? So I just put, look at these birds. I just put all kinds of black, whites, and grays now. I go overboard, definitely. Like, I've got a lot of ephemera for this. <laughs> but as you can see, there's some, like, really, like, neat pictures. Very neat pictures. So I just kind of tuck those all in there. I'll be making a page in my writing journal for that. <clears throat> And then I have this glue book slash junk journal. I mean, it's pretty well a glue book at this point so far, but I've also got some mixed media in there. And like, I put this little, little frilly, little frilly in there. So I've got some things that I've gathered as I was going through. Um, yeah, and one piece of paper will catch my attention. I think it was this. So I'm like, okay, the blues and the purples in there. And then I just kind of started building on that. And this lady, so it was like blues and purples and pinks. And this little bit of wrapping paper. So every time I find something, I was like, oh, like it's in the back of my mind. I'm like, okay, I'm going to add that to that pile. And then again, this is blues and purples and pinks, but it's going to be like darker. And then these are purples and peaches. Isn't that beautiful? And I think that started with this. This, it was a note, it was a piece of note paper or um, letter writing paper that uh, stationary, thank you, stationary that someone had sent me. So there's all kinds of like, and then this goes with it good. Like every time I find something, look at these paint chips, I'll tuck them in there. So that's how I organize for pages. And then also how I organize for whole journals. Because you never know where inspiration is going to strike. I mean, you could pick up one picture and it's like, ooh, like here, I'll show you. Hang on, we'll just reach in here and grab something. Random. Okay, so this is really busy, but I mean, I would like this, I would gather, you know, things in mustard yellow and like probably the dark blue and just build around that things that go with that theme, maybe some elephants, you know, that's how I organize my things. So uh, what else have I got going on here? Yeah, so I've got a cat, I've got those categories and then I've got a category, yeah, of stuff to pack away. Oh, and then this was just, I hauled this out and I was like, you know what? Um, it's a colorized, hand colorized um, picture. It would have been a black and white picture, hand colored or chroma, whatever, chroma color or whatever from an old houseplant book. And I uh, found these geraniums that also look a lot like hydrangeas, really. 
um, and I thought they needed a black outline. So I thought that looked really cool. So I'm going to cut that out. Don't know what I'm going to do with it, where I'm going to put it, but I think it looks really cool. So I'm just going to put that in my pile of ephemera that I'm going to uh, file away in my, in my cabinets. <clears throat> I'm also being a little picky. Oh, I love that. Look at that English cottage. I'm not keeping as much as maybe I would normally keep um, just because of space restrictions, but yeah. So see, yeah, I put him in the blue file, that car. So um, what's next? What's next? Um, oh, 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 oh. So if you are a junk journaler slash crafter, uh, Kim Newberg, if you, if you do or follow uh, Thrifty Connects, you definitely already know who she is. Um, but she just hit 2,000 subs here on YouTube, which is awesome. Congratulations, Kim. So she's doing a giveaway and she gives away boxes of goodies. So, you know, junk journaling, like crafting slash, you know, goodies. I mean, you don't have to be a junk journaler to use these goodies. You can use them in mixed media projects or whatever. Um, so she's giving away uh, boxes of goodies. So um, one thing she's also doing is if you aren't a subscriber of hers yet, if you go over to her channel and subscribe and you comment on the video, um, I'll link the video down below for the giveaway. Uh, if you comment, subscribe to her and comment on there that you came from my channel, you let her know that that's how you found her. Then if you happen to win the draw to get a box of goodies, then I also get a box of goodies. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. I really like that. That's a great idea, Kim. So, um, yeah, so head on over there and don't just join her channel for the giveaway. Definitely check out her videos if you're interested in junk journaling or like making ephemera or whatever. Uh, definitely, yeah, go. And she does other things too. Like she does these boho bags, which are just absolutely beautiful. Like she takes all kinds of really neat like like upholstery fabric and like upholstery trim and all kinds of neat like fluff and and snazziness and everything and makes these amazing bags so definitely definitely um watch some of her videos she is fantastic she's super interesting she has great stories too uh yeah so head on over there and definitely give her some love yeah so um here we are just uh fitting clothes and I'm going to be doing, oh, and that's Coco Chanel. I'm going to be doing a, um, definitely a sewing journal because that's what I do for a living. So I want to do at least a couple sewing journals. Yeah. So, um, news, news, news. So today we had a meeting with the bank again, um, because we wanted to update our mortgage lady, our mortgage specialist on, um, the fact that our house is now sold. So that's awesome. So uh, we're, yeah, hopefully, hopefully, we're kind of resigned to the fact that we may probably have to move into my dad's cottage. But there were like three properties listed yesterday in the area. There haven't been like barely any listed, but three that fit our criteria. So I think we're going to go look at all three of those. Um, yeah, and there's another one that the price had recently dropped. So it dropped down into our search, you know, our search category or what have you. Look at this a fluffy cow. I love fluffy cows. They're so cute. They're like all the rage right now, right? So yeah, we're going to go and take a look at these, I think. So hopefully, hopefully as much as I would love, love, love to spend the summer in my dad's cottage with this huge front porch with the windows open and the breeze coming in off the ocean. And that would be my crafty room. Even more, I don't want to move twice. Uh, <laughs> I really don't want to move twice and then deal with getting a storage unit for most of our stuff. I mean, technically we did, I talked to my dad and we probably could store all of our stuff at his cottage, but it would be stored mostly in the front room. <laughs> and I don't want to do that because I want to use the front room. <laughs> so yeah. So we're hopefully going to be able to find a house and move into it in the next few weeks. So we don't have to, uh, we don't have to move twice. So wish us luck on that. Our, um, our sale is all done, finalized, signed, sealed, delivered. We've got four weeks until our closing date. So we're just kind of casually, well, Rob kind of like goes crazy and packs everything. <laughs> He's like, woo, he packs just everything all at once. Like he went first day, he was downstairs and he packed up like all of his books. He owns a lot of books, or I guess we own a lot of books. Um, most of them are his though. 
and um he also uh yeah he packed those all up oh excuse me and he um my coffee hasn't kicked in yet and he like took the book part bookshelves all apart and everything isn't this great this is from a vintage greeting card it's like embossed like raised i just love the colors it's so funky um and that's really cool too so yeah he's like you know got everything all packed up in a pile there and i'm like okay whoa down a little bit we got we got four weeks calm yourself don't pack the whole house <laughs> I say this because I definitely pack the whole house. Like, I don't know how many things before. Um, look at that. That's gorgeous. That would be easy to make. You just, like, do a magazine lady kind of thing. And then, like, paint some flowers around her face. I might give that a try. Um, you can find inspiration anywhere. Check out these rainbow sheep. Those are so cool. So, yeah. Um, I it's It's been more than one occasion that I'm like, oh, where is this utensil or this dish? And it's like, uh-oh. I pack that away <laughs> before we even like tried to sell our house or anything it's packed away yeah isn't that pretty so I am definitely guilty of that myself oh, but it's just uh it's all so exciting we got the um I don't know if I mentioned in my previous video we got the sold sign put on our sign on the lawn or for sale sign or realtor sign or whatever you call it. Oh, look at these. These guys are like a little lighting track. <laughs> I so need those. They're like, oh, <laughs> one's even wearing a hat. And this dude with his unibrow. Those are so funny. Oh my goodness. I found the cutest thing. So I have a thing for a long time. Uh, I wanted to buy something, but I was like, okay, I'm going to wait. And then once we move into our new house, you know, find a house, buy a house, move in. I'm going to buy it as my, as a housewarming gift to myself. So I want to, I want a shark coochie board. <laughs> I mean, kind of everywhere sells now, but I think they started with an artist on Etsy. So I'm definitely going to go to Etsy and buy it. And it's like, my favorite one is shaped like a shark. And because that's the joke, it's, it's not charcuterie, right? It's shark coochie. And I think, I think that probably came from somebody's like spelling mistake. Like, you know, the ones you see, like, that go down infamously, infamously in memes, like, oh, maybe Yoda, like, um, the uh, synonym rolls. <laughs> so I, I assume it was probably something like that, like somebody's misspelling of charcuterie, and somebody made a shark coochie board out of it. So I'm buying myself a shark coochie board when we move as a housewarming gift to myself and I'm also buying myself aren't those really cool I'm also buying myself a um this thing I saw the other day I saw it on wish it's a t-rex <laughs> but he's like eating garden gnomes <laughs> and they're like they're like ones on his back trying to like I don't know stab him or something and he's got one in his mouth and like it's like they're fighting this t-rex which is hilarious right that just it cracked me up so bad so yeah, I am definitely going to be buying that as well because I want to do, I did a few years ago, uh, I don't think I ever put anything on YouTube about it, but I did, um, I had this great big, big planter that Rob bought me and we did a fairy garden. We got all kinds of like little moss and little, um, one of the cutest plants was called Wooly Thyme and it's a ground cover and it smells great, kind of like thyme, but like instead of like the longer leaves like thyme, it's like little like round leaves and it, it does crawl. Like it's so pretty so pretty and then of course it's woolly so it's like fuzzy so yeah all little plants like that like I definitely want to make another fairy garden in the future isn't this picture great a bun in the oven get it <clears throat> look at this deer he's from a book and it's just the whole book is like this it's like it reminds me of like like there's a style of anime like that I guess like Studio Ghibli kind of thing like everything's kind of like soft and pastel-y and he's just beautiful the pages from it are beautiful they're in here too somewhere <sighs> so yeah there's that what was I talking about <laughs> I got all sidetracked by the little deer <laughs> Ooh, something shiny oh look at that tart looks really good or flan oh look at that the little bingo balls and everything so I mean a lot of this stuff I don't have a um I don't have a 
immediate purpose for, so most of it goes packed away. I gotta be very, um, very picky, really, about what I'm putting in. Oh my God, look at this. Isn't this fabulous? <laughs> He's like a little, like, Buddha doll. But, but look at the booty on that Buddha doll. And he's doing some like, I don't know, like pole dancing type things out of pole. But that booty though, <laughs> I am definitely going to be using him in a, in a journal soon. Yeah. So as I was saying, yeah, I got to be super picky because, you know, this little, the little um, page protector binder notebook thingy is, um, has definitely limited space. So there's things I like, but it's got to be things that I feel like, like, look at that. That's gorgeous. That'd be beautiful to work in the background of something. And that too, that's very fiery. <clears throat> like, I love all of it, but <laughs> I've got to be like, no, no, like this. The bird's really cool, but I do have a lot of birds in there. Oh, look at this. That's beautiful. I didn't care about the table. I just like this. I always make sure to check the back too, because there's a good chance. See? Like that. Yeah, that was meant to be the back. Yeah. Like I cut out... Yeah. I always check the other side because there could be something better or that was a side you intended in the first place. I did that the other day. I did something horrible. Like I cut something and I was like, wait a second. I flipped it over and it was actually the other side I wanted. It was like, no. These little flowers. These are cute. Yeah, so today I don't have any sewing to do once I got all those pants done pretty well and they were uh look for sewing sewing journal look at all that trim um yeah it was nice to get all the boxes of those pants the hundred and ended up being 107 pairs of pants no 108 that's a lot of pants so <laughs> it was nice to get them out of the house and uh, look at these aren't those cool like little like drops and, uh, but my craft room now, I mean, it's like, oh, look at all this space. So now I've kind of got stuff everywhere, uh, for packing. I've got like a few boxes on the go. I've got a box. I am packing as if we're going to live at my dad's cottage because there's a very good chance that might happen if, you know, a house isn't listed that we like in the next four weeks. But it looks like listings may start like be picking up they might be picking up because yesterday there was like three houses like I said that met our criteria that popped up so sometimes we can go days without one popping up so hopefully hopefully that means people are starting to list more and we can find a house with a quick closing that would be awesome I love this cat I love this cat so much I don't know what I do with her but I love her <clears throat> Dun, 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 dun. I love this chicken too. This chicken's got so much attitude. <laughs> uh, roosters. Roosters have attitude. That's attitude is roosters. When I was a little kid, I have like a rooster phobia, legit. When I was a little kid, it would have been before I started school. So probably like four years old-ish. We lived on a farm and it wasn't a big farm. Like we just had chickens. That was it. Chickens in a garden or whatever. Um, but... I'd go out to the barn every morning and get the eggs, like little four-year-old me. And I had like all the chickens named and everything. Anyway, one day the rooster flew at my face and attacked me. Um, I didn't realize till recently, like their spear things. I didn't realize that they had these big spears. Like, and now I realize that I'm really lucky that he didn't like take my eye out or something. Um, yeah, right. So yeah, I have this phobia of roosters because roosters are horribly nasty. And it's funny though, I'm not scared of other birds. Um, when I worked, <laughs> when I was, uh, one of my first jobs, I, my mom worked at a hotel as a housekeeper. Um, and my brother, she kind of like got him a job there or whatever. And he was working outside in the maintenance department. So he was doing like painting and all this stuff. So he was kind of like, my brother was younger than me, so I think I was about like 19 and um, he would have been like 17, 16, 16, yeah. And um, he just like 
kind of like goofed off. Like he wouldn't show up for work and stuff. So I told my mom, I'm like, I could do that job. Just like planting flowers and painting and stuff. That's a joke. So the old fella that, that was head of maintenance, he, uh, he hired me on. He was a nice old man. He hired me on and I had, I had an awesome summer painting like, you know, like the concrete dividers in the parking lot and painting like, you know, walls outside and stuff. I was outside all summer. And one of my jobs was, um, they had a big duck pond. One of my jobs was feeding the ducks and swans. <laughs> so apparently swans can be nasty too, but these swans were, yeah, they were fine with me, I guess, probably because I always had food for them, but I was, um, I had my like bucket of feed and <clears throat> I was squatted down on the ground and I had my head down and I was like reaching into the bucket. And all of a sudden this giant black foot just went Funk, right in front of me and I look up and the swan is like right there in my face <laughs> it was a little intimidating but yeah <laughs> it was okay <laughs> I wasn't as scared as you know if it had been a rooster oh look at these colors these colors are absolutely gorgeous it's all like coppery pink I'm kind of keeping this aside because there's another half of that photo it's funny because I can't remember what happened two minutes ago. Like, I can't remember what I said 30 seconds ago, but I can remember things like this. It's like, oh, that picture there, out of all these, like, five million pictures I have, that one has a mate to it. It's a two-part picture. I know, right? My brain is so weird. Oh, a little strip like that. That's cute. I have a little... Oh, and these were from a book, and I cut out the sayings to keep the sayings, and then I kept the little frames. Cute, eh? And then I'll just go around and cut them you know, more intricately when I need to. And there's some teddy bears that was from that book, I believe. Aren't these bags cool? Oh, they're like hand stamped. Or no, maybe not hand stamped because that's multicolored. But this one looks very hand stamped. This one and this one. That's cool. I think I'll do a bear journal at some point in the future. Not too distant future because I do have quite a bit of bear stuff. I think I bought a few bear books. And that one I'd be doing to sell, I'm sure, because I'm not a huge bear fan. Teddy bear fan. Because I'm a horrible person. Look at this piano. Isn't that like elegant? It's crazy. I'm wondering if that is. No, okay. I was just like, is that Versailles maybe? But no. If it was Versailles, I'd be putting it aside because that's a. Uh... We went to Versailles when we were in Paris on our honeymoon. So that would be worked into our. Um into our honeymoon journal, which I can't wait to get started on. I'm very excited. And that's like I was talking about um, the, my New York journal, or like all my New York trips. I can't wait to get them into that book that I'm doing, um, following Kim's hardcover book slash coffee table book tutorial. Look at this. Isn't that so cute? Little round leaves and little round pot. It's so adorable. Yeah, so I don't have that stuff packed away. And the only reason why I don't have that stuff packed away, my ephemera, my personal ephemera from trips, is because I have these like three chests in my living room. And they're um, they're like, they're not like old wooden chests. They're fairly new and they're all like decorated. So the biggest one is decorated with New York images. So I keep all my New York stuff in there. Um, and then the next one is decorated with London stuff. So that's all our honeymoon stuff from London and Paris. And then the little one we have on top is, um, it's decorated with, um, the houses they're called. It's funny cause I was, ex I was telling this to somebody I was watching the other day. I forget who it was, but I had, um, they were like, they cut out these houses and they're like, oh, I think they're from Norway or something, but they're actually from Newfoundland. Uh, their house is called Jellybean Row. If you want to Google it, they're really cute. Um, and they're all these little like seafaring town houses that are all painted really super bright colors all in a row. And they're very cute. But now in Newfoundland and St. John's, the whole town is pretty well like that now. Like all downtown, all the houses are painted cool um, because it's, such, it's so popular with tourists or whatever. So yeah, it's got Jelly Bean Row houses on that box. And it's all of our stuff. Or actually that one I gave to Rob to put his memories in because he's a Newfoundlander. So he can put whatever he wants. And he's got all this like little stuff, you know, memorabilia from when he was a kid and things. So, so that's cool. So I've just got them like they're in my living room all the time. They're just like a, like they kind of make like an end table, like an impromptu end table kind of thing. So yeah, I haven't packed that away because it was part of the decor. These are so creepy. So I'm just may get those out 
and uh, yeah, maybe when I'm working, I was saying when I'm working on my um, on my journal with Kim's with Kim's uh, with Kim's tutorial on how to uh, we're making a journal out of the coffee table book. So yeah, I think I might because I kind of want to do it. Um, I used to I have a travel journal that I've documented the trips in every trip I've made to New York. But I'd also like to kind of maybe move everything over to a, or maybe not move everything over, but like all the extra stuff, because my travel journal is not very big. Um, it's like, you know, easy to travel with, right? Um, but I'd like to have, I'm thinking like a giant journal that I can just not organize by trip, which is originally how I kind of like, that's how I do it in my travel journal, but organize by area of New York. So like anything for Central Park, regardless of what year I go there, I can put into this one section. So, or like, you know, Statue of Liberty or yeah. So every, every, um, attraction or whatever place in New York will have its own spot in the book, like own little section. So I've always kind of wanted, or I, I thought about that in the last, like, I don't know, a couple years or whatever. Um, isn't that cute? That's from one of those little, you know, inspirational books with all kinds of little sayings. <clears throat> yeah, so I am hoping to uh, to do that with this book that we're making. I love, love, love that. And it's just like a hand drawn. This would be so easy to make. You just take some black cardstock and draw a few ovals and then do some doodles. I may have to make some of those actually. See, inspiration comes from everywhere. Oh, and this was another one. I had a little saying, so I cut it out. I didn't want the saying. It was, this book was um, for teachers. So it was all like a little like, oh, you're the best teacher kind of thing. So, I mean, I'm not a teacher. It, you know, that didn't really, it didn't apply to me. So I just cut it out and then I can put whatever in there. You got to think outside the box. Cobalt. I'll put that in my, uh, in my color. Oh, look at this. Speaking of color, yellow toaster. I kind of, um, when I sort ephemera, that's kind of my first thing that I'm hauling pictures out for. Like my most important is my color glue book, my color glue books. Yeah. And my monochromatic color glue books. Nicole from Relax Cut Glue has been doing, uh, she has a monochromatic glue book, uh, rainbow glue book. And it's like all, I think she's got like five pages of each color kind of thing. And she was asking, does anybody else do color glue books? I'm like, girl, I got one for each color and some of them I've now started second ones. <laughs> I'm ahead of the game on this, on the color glue books for sure. <laughs> that is definitely, they're definitely my favorite glue books. So yeah, this is just what I do. I might actually put that in my purple one. It's a little frame, you know, little frame, just random word. And a lot of times like I'll cut out words individual words country isn't that cute it's all like lit up this one it was like part of a statement but I mean I'll cut out the individual words so uh, I don't imagine I'll ever use the word Avalon but <laughs> wait that's not ornament oh it was tournament <laughs> I was thinking that's ornament but I mean I could cut out our or name because it's an it's a neat font. I don't I definitely don't keep every like headline in every book and magazine. Just uh the ones that like aren't those cool? The little pots. Or no, those are lampshades, I think. Oh, well, they look like pots, but like the opening's there. I don't know. Maybe they're vases. And look, that's just a little bit with cool stuff on it. So I put that in my scraps. <clears throat> And I have files for Easter, Halloween. Oh, here's a saying. Making simple complicated is commonplace. Making them complicated simple, that's creativity. Nice cake. That's a lot of layers. Oh, this, like, that's beautiful. I might work that into my, Al oh, look, my Alice in Wonderland journal. Definitely, that is a cool caterpillar. I had an Alice in Wonderland tea party. Mad Hatter's Tea Party for my 40th birthday, which was five years ago now because I'm old, old as dirt. <laughs> so I still haven't, yeah, I haven't made a journal for that yet, but I definitely, uh, I've been gathering things for it for a long time, for sure. Definitely can't wait to get in my own space, a new space where I have room to do all these things. I'm going to put this, I have lots of flower pictures, so I'm going to put this in my purple 
in my purple glue book because it's so bright. Such a deep, gorgeous purple. Made easy. So there's kind of a method to my madness, as you can see. Some people like to um, sort things as they take them out of the magazines. And some people go through, I think Nicole may do it that way, a relax cut glue, go through and harvest for one thing first. I had seen somebody do that, but I don't know. I think it was her, maybe? Harvest for one thing first. So say like go through and harvest for your um, monochromatic glue books. And then go through and harvest for, you know, uh, scavenger glue books or what have you. So, oh yes, that's what I'm also gathering over here, but I just don't have too much of it. Um, it's stuff for my scavenger hunt glue books. Look at that word, sophisticated. And I like those feet too. Oh, and one thing I do want to try, um, speaking of Nicole from Relax Cut Glue, she's been doing these like, she'll take bodies of people. <laughs> that sounds so horrible. She'll take uh, people, yeah, and cut off their heads and put like animal heads on them. And it looks so cool. So I've been kind of starting to watch, but I don't have any fashion magazines right now. I think fashion magazines are going to be the best bet to find cool bodies. Still sounds so weird to say that. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to, uh, going to keep an eye out to see, um, isn't that cool? Cinnamon roll Christmas tree going to keep an eye out to um hopefully find some cool bodies oh there's a little like there's a little head see I could put him on a different body he's not an animal but I think he'd look cool on like you know a fashion fashionable lady or something and there's a dress for him I could use that for the same kind of thing or that could go great in my um sewing journals click now see I'm gonna keep that because I am doing a page about my youtubing I think when I hit a thousand subs, um, which should be hopefully like in a few months, I will do a page. Yeah. All about my YouTube journey. That is so gorgeous. Love, love, love the colors. And I love how much black, like just black outline there is without color. So pretty. Ooh, look at that for my chocolate glue books or, or my chocolate journals, which are definitely happening. I had seen um, Pam at the paper outpost. I believe it was. She had she had done a couple chocolate journals and I was like oh, oh my goodness I need to do a chocolate journal because <laughs> it was just they were they were delicious journals very delicious journals so yeah there's a strip with just some cool little I'll probably put that in my black and white glue book actually I might work in my black and in one of my uh, monochromatic glue books later today maybe the black and white because I haven't worked in that for forever I feel like I've been giving the colors all the love so there's a scrap. I might do that because, oh, there's some succulents. So that's for my scavenger hunt glue book. That's from like a, no, maybe not a gaming magazine, but that looks very like a gaming ad. <clears throat> yeah, watching Nicole work on hers, it definitely, definitely um, makes me want to haul mine out and work on them, work on them, on them, in them. Same thing, I guess. Yeah. These cool cars. You never know what you're going to find in magazines. Little baby. Yeah, that's like a guy making armor. That's definitely from a gaming magazine. So it may seem like I do keep everything out of magazines, but I don't really. Fab fabric. <clears throat> I mean, I guess I do kind of keep most things, but yeah. May we help you. I really, uh, I'm looking forward to when I get into my new space, being able to organize all my words. Cause right now my words, I had them in like one of those like plastic shoebox containers, storage containers. Um, and then I had everything kind of just organized into envelopes, like phrases and quotes and poems and individual words and letters, individual letters. Uh, so it would look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Garden of delights of delights. So it'll be nice to be able to come up with a better system for that for sure. For sure, for sure. Oh, it's beautiful. It looks like a ceiling medallion, I assume, maybe. Sorry about the glare. All these magazines are glossy, you know how it is. So I don't know why, but yeah, I've always had this thing where I want to cut out images and keep them. Like even as a kid. I didn't even know what to do with them. I just had them. Like my grandparents would give me like old like 
TV guides and Reader's Digest magazines and stuff. And I just cut cool pictures out of them. <clears throat> and my little kid brain didn't, you know, didn't, uh, the, the thought of collage didn't occur to me. But now I had started saving um, images for, it was when I started with mail art, probably about, I don't know, a good like, probably like 12, 15 years ago now. And so I started with ATCs and that, um, yeah, I started saving things to use on my collage ATCs. I do all kinds of ATCs. I love doing like, I love using ATCs for, um, to try out new techniques actually. Like I've done some really weird ones. I've done some like coffee painting ones and I've done sewn ones, fabric ones. So yeah, um, I saved for collage ATCs. Leggings are not pants. This was some article from like a guy and it's like, mind your business. Get in your lane, dude. <laughs> Leggings are not pants. Get out of here. <laughs> mind your business. <laughs> <clears throat> ah, it's raining new ideas around here <laughs> oh excuse me it's my coffee my coffee needs to be warmed up at this point so yeah we had our meeting with the uh mortgage specialist this morning we are good let her know that the house is sold and uh yeah where to go from there i had to ask her because i mean we've been kind of looking we want to stay pretty well within 45 minutes of Moncton or Fredericton. Um, Fredericton's another city in New Brunswick. It's our capital. And um, Rob has to stay close to, he wants to stay kind of close to work. So he works from home mostly, but if he ever has to go into the office, he wants to be, you know, like maximum 45 minutes away. So it's not a huge haul. I know those of you in America are like, dude, I commute like two and a half hours each way every day. And it's like, I know that's crazy. That was one of the things when I lived in the U S I moved to the U S like, I was like, what? <laughs> there was like one guy that I knew that commuted. Like I think he went like three hours one way every day. And it's like, at that point I would try to be, I would, I would find a place closer, a place to live closer to wherever I worked. You know, if I had to go to an apartment or whatever. Oh, hello, Chris Evans, my online boyfriend. People's sexiest man of the year, finally. Wow. So, yeah, we want to live within like 45 minutes of, <clears throat> of an office for Rob's work. So, um, that also includes, uh, we're right close, we're very close, right close, we're right close to the border of, um, Nova Scotia. And I would like to live in Nova Scotia. That'd be cool. I like Nova Scotia. I like Nova Scotia better than New Brunswick, I gotta tell you. So anyway, um, <clears throat> we've been looking in Nova Scotia too, just close enough to the New Brunswick border that we could, you know, he can still come to work here. Um, so yeah, we had to ask because I know realty wise, our realtor in New Brunswick can't sell us a house in Nova Scotia. You're, it's by province, right? I assume in the States it's probably by state the same way, but yeah, so we can't, um, he can't, yeah, show us houses and stuff in Nova Scotia. Isn't that great? That's from like a cookbook, I think. So we'd have to get a different realtor down there. So I was wondering, I'm like, okay, what about the bank? Do we have to switch everything over to like Nova Scotia? I mean, the bank we're with, of course, all the banks are Canadian wide, but still we're wondering if there's any sort of, you know, regulations or whatever, but nope, we are good. We can stay with this specific uh, lady, the specific mortgage specialist. Look at that. So beautiful. Yeah. So that was good news. Good, good news. Oh, there's a whale. We'll put him for the scavenger hunt glue book. Yeah, so we've had lots of, uh, definitely lots of good news for, um, for our house stuff. Knock on wood that we'll have, we have four weeks from today before our closing date. So if everything goes our way, I mean, we'll find a house that has an immediate closing date, like something that's empty that we can close immediately and move well before our closing date. That would be awesome. Oh, look at this. It's like a, just all these colors are so soft and coppery and like rose gold-y. Oh, that's going to be so pretty in one of my 
books. I'm going to put that in my, in my orange glue book. There's some that I'm more apt to use words and stuff in because, um, there, you find those colors a lot less like green. I mean, green, you find green all the time. There's so much green, so much green, so much blue. So I'm way more picky about those. Like I won't just put anything, but like yellow and orange, especially, um, I will, oh, there's the other half of that photo. Look, see, told ya. I really like the style of that. It's really cool. So yeah, I'm more apt to use like every little bit I can find. So the words that are in colored, in that color. Oh, and this is from the Uppercase Magazine, which I am definitely subscribing to when I move. It was Diane from Pretty, Pretty Pink Cottage who, um, who, um, who put me onto that magazine. I had never heard of it and it's Canadian and it's a paper magazine. Now in my, in my defense, I haven't gone to, uh, to chapters, Canadian version, which Canada's version of Barnes and Noble chapters Indigo. Um, I hadn't been there in like a long time, <clears throat> long enough that I didn't even know the Starbucks in there had closed. <laughs> And apparently it closed like a year ago. That was Moncton's first Starbucks, actually. Look at that. That's so cool. They're like mosaic, like abstract mosaic. So yeah, um, I went in just for this magazine. And I was so, uh, I was lucky that they had it, but you can order online. You can subscribe to it. So I'm not subscribing right now since all this moving thing, like we don't know what we're going to do, like, especially if we have to move to the cottage. So Canada Post, you put more carp in the DM. <laughs> so Canada Post, you pay like, I don't know, it's like a hundred bucks or something and they'll reroute your mail. So only your mail, not parcels. Thanks, Canada Post. Even, even if it's like parcels that they deliver, not like parcels through their courier service, pure later, but parcels through Canada Post themselves. No, no, they don't, they don't reroute those. Thank you for nothing, Canada Post. So um, don't know why we're paying them a hundred dollars. So yeah we'd have to do that to get things rerouted to the cottage. And honestly, I don't even know if the cottage, it must get mail. I think every address needs to have a mailbox, but I don't think it would go directly to the cottage. It's like down a dirt road. It's probably like some sort of community mailbox. Um, I'll have to ask my dad about that. I'm just kind of thinking out loud now, but yeah, to get it routed there and then rerouted somewhere else later, that is going to be such a pain. And that's something I haven't done yet is started making a list of places I need to change our address. <laughs> oh no. Moving is such a pain, guys. <laughs> uh, but we are so lucky to have sold our house. We were so, so stressed over that. Oh, and so, so lucky to have the option to move into my dad's house, my dad's cottage, because yeah, I mean, we, we definitely could have ended up homeless. Oh, look at this. I had two of these actually. I might, I'll hang on to one and like do a giveaway or something in like a glue book collage pack or something at some point. Give old magazines a new life. It was about recycling magazines, but I'm like, how perfect is this for glue bookers and junk journalers? Like that is amazing. So I did get two of these for sure. So I'm keeping one for myself, of course, but yeah, I'll, I'll tuck the other one away to, uh, to give away eventually once I'm all settled and able to do, you know, mailing and things again. Yeah, I had stopped everything. I wonder if she'd be good for, she doesn't really get, no, she doesn't get shoulders though. I was going to say for one of those, you know, put an animal head on her. I, um, I stopped everything like a year ago, all of the, all of my swapping, like I do a lot of swaps online, swap bot, things like that, anything like that. Um, I stopped because you never know. Oh, I stopped, um, I stopped post crossing. I do post crossing. Um, I stopped ordering off of places like wish and things like that. Uh, like right now, as of this month, since I only got a month left, I'm the only place I'd order from right now is Amazon so that it can be sure to get here before we move. Because yeah, I don't, I don't trust Canada Post to rewrote anything or whatever. So once I get moved, I will be starting all that back up and I cannot wait. I cannot wait. I love to do online swaps and things. So yeah, SwapBot is my favorite because there's all kinds of different swaps over there and it's all in one place. Um, but I have also been on ATCs for all for many, many years. So once in a while I'll join a, I haven't in a couple years actually joined a swap on there. 
because I've just been too busy with all this other stuff, but I will be going back to that for sure. I find like things come in, in, um, in bursts with me. Like I've, I've definitely evolved as a crafter very much, but I also like to do, um, like in the winter, I do a lot of like more needlework, like, cause I have the urge to, I guess, be cozy kind of things. So snuggle up on the couch and do like crochet or cross stitch or what have you. Um, but I, yeah. So for ATCs, it's more of a once in a while thing. It happens. I've kind of evolved from that to like, that was part of my journey, mail art to, um, junk journaling. So now I'm at junk journaling and it's kind of everything all together and I find it very satisfying. So hopefully that's, I think, I feel like that's kind of my niche is junk journaling. And the other half of that is, a. Uh, fiber crafts so any sort of fabric and yeah so those are my two mains so hopefully I can get back into doing some swaps and things doors that's what I'm looking at that I'm like I want that for something but I don't know what doors I'm doing a door page in my scavenger hunt glue book isn't that the most perfect little bun ever the poppy seeds oh and the little piglets I have just been fussy cutting almost everything out lately I think that'd be cool in my orange blue book. I don't mind a little bit of extra color in there. A little bit of other color. I do like it as monochromatic as possible though. So I am very picky about how much color I allow in there on macaron. <clears throat> I had made macarons once, or macaroons as you know, you say in English. But to me, macaroons growing up was like, I think they're called like frogs a lot of the time. They're like oatmeal and coconut drop cookies, like a little mounds. And there's also like just the coconut ones, like these were chocolate. And then there's also like just the coconut ones that are like just like a toasted coconut and they're like a beige, like a light, you know, blondie color kind of thing. So yeah, these true macaron, um, when we were in Paris, I made it my, uh, my mission to try as many as I could. So I went to like the two, um, highest rated macaron places and tried there. And then, um, I even tried at mcdonald's you can get macaroons you can get macaroons in at mcdonald's and they actually weren't that bad <laughs> i was really surprised i thought they'd be horribly disgusting but they were actually pretty good they were they were better than like the donuts you get at mcdonald's here by far yeah definitely so that was a thing so yeah i um i made macarons once and um I was working, I used to work at a casino and I had brought them in to my team or whatever and we were having them in the lunchroom and then doesn't the executive chef come out and like he's talking to me about them and I'm like yeah okay this is what I did and I did this and like I made caramel and then like the fleur de sel and blah 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 and he tried them and he's like you did really good these are awesome and I'm like ah thank you for being a total amateur baker right but I was pretty tickled I was pretty pretty tickled and um not to toot my own horn but I gotta tell you the best baker in town, the best place that makes the best macaroons. Um, they're not perfect because you're supposed to take, look at the pastel. You're supposed to take um, the, it's, you're supposed to have almond flour. So the difference between almond flour and almond meal, which you can buy almond meal here, but actually, you know what? I haven't looked in a long time, so I bet you can buy almond flour now because they have way more flours. But before you can only buy almond meal, so it's more, it's like cornmeal, it's more grainy. So you're supposed to grind that down till it's a flour texture, but dude at his bakery does not. So his macaroons or macarons are a little grainy and they're not supposed to be. So I ground mine down and a food processor, just saying. Mr. Professional Safe Pastry Chef. <laughs> I'm being like, right, like snotty. <laughs> uh, it's funny. when it Actually, when it comes to food, I can be snotty. I'm snotty about my steak. I am very passionate about steak. And uh, there are very few people that will cook steak properly. Like I will, I will rarely, rarely order a steak at a restaurant because it's always, it's never cooked right. They all, I am a, I am a blue steak kind of girl, rare, but I'll take blue. And uh, yeah, it's always overcooked. Always, 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 never fails. Look at that, isn't that beautiful? <sighs> yeah, so I'm all wound up now. My coffee's kicked in, so maybe I'll go do some packing. I know Rob had, uh, we're both, uh, we both love books. Like, hmm, I need art. Or, hmm, I need art, sorry. Um, 
we both love books so yeah we have like lots of books like I have a massive Stephen King collection because as a teenager like he became one of my absolute favorite artists I still love Stephen King like I love him because he's so descriptive it's funny because a lot of people say he's um he's too wordy but that's exactly what I love about him I love that he takes like such he goes into such detail with with describing things so yeah but we've come to realize that we don't read books anymore we don't read hardcover like hardcover or like um we don't read paper books anymore physical books we do audiobooks both of us that's all we do is audiobooks so I think we're gonna definitely be purging our book collection <sighs> as much as I'd love to have like a little library nook or whatever like we don't read books like I haven't read a paper book in forever and the last time I did man it took me forever to get through it I do have a couple actually that I'm trying to read uh, one is a local author um, from Nova Scotia I believe uh, she had published a book and I bought it at a comic-con and I had kind of started it but yeah once I get into it it's it's good I'm good like I like reading but where I've learned to use listen to audiobooks I mean I prefer like I can listen to a book while I'm doing something and so I'm getting two things done at once so yeah we're gonna let go of a lot of our books I think like my Stephen King books I'll never read those I I will listen to them And so, yeah, but the exception to that is uh, Terry Pratchett. I'm probably going to keep all of my Neil Gaiman slash Terry Pratchett books. Uh, Terry Pratchett, if you do not know who he is, Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett are my two favorite authors. Um, Neil Gaiman, I'm sure you know who he is. He's done a lot of TV lately. A lot of his stuff's been made into TV. So like um, uh, a Nancy Boys, was it called Nancy Boys though? I think it was. Um uh good omens that's him and terry pratchett they wrote that book together uh the sandman that's neil gaiman that was his comic book uh american gods that's neil gaiman so yeah he's like all this sci-fi stuff he is yeah um Coraline. Coraline is neil gaiman um i love 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 listening to neil gaiman books though <laughs> more than i more than reading them for sure but like because his voice is so wonderful his voice just puts me to sleep and he's such a good storyteller it's, it's often that like authors, when they read their own books, they just read them. They don't like kind of act them out and like story tell them. He's a good, you can be a good author and not be a good storyteller, like for reading. I've learned, but he is an excellent storyteller. So yeah, um, I highly recommend checking out Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett. Terry Pratchett, his Discworld series is absolutely amazing. Amazing. I love these books, the humor and like, just like, like, there's so much in there. Like, you know how Disney movies have always been like, they always have like a lot of inside jokes for the adults, like political jokes and you know, like little like naughty jokes and things like Disney's always done that. Same thing with Terry Pratchett. There's a lot of inside stuff in there that like, oh, you know, like, deep jokes kind of things. So yeah, I'm trying to collect his books. The whole series, Discworld series, it's 40 something books, 41, 43, something like that, because um, there's different, it's a totally different experience to read it and listen to it. If you read it, then you're getting the phonetic jokes, like, because sometimes things are pronounced, like written weird and kind of thing. Anyway, it's part, it's part of the joke, right? And I'm only going to get it if I physically read it. So I've started collecting those. Um, yeah. So that's one collection I definitely want to have. Look at that. Isn't that bright? And then, yeah, Neil Gaiman. I'm going to be keeping his stuff. I think I'm ready to let my Stephen King stuff go, though, because I love I love listening to Stephen King audiobooks. He's got some great people that read his books. There's a couple, like, main people that read his books. Um, he's one of them, of course. But, like, there's a couple other authors that just had some bay that just read his books phenomenally. So, yeah, going to let those go, I think. <clears throat> and especially the hardcovers I don't know how many times I was younger and I'd be like in bed reading a Stephen King hardcover and then I'd fall asleep and like the book would hit me in the face <laughs> I can't believe I'd ever woke up with like you know a bloody nose or, or a black eye because <laughs> I'm that person I will fight until I drop you know the book or the phone <laughs> it's like nope no nope, I'm not going to sleep yet nope nope I'm good I'm good right now and then thunk yeah so um yeah this is my uh, chatty hour. I hope you enjoyed. 
I'm having fun sorting these. This is another thing, like anything like this, like fussy cutting and sorting these images and stuff is just so relaxing to me. It just relaxes me so much. But I think I will go uh, go downstairs and help Rob sort through some books so we can get rid of some. The more stuff, we, yeah, we decided the more stuff, the less stuff we have to move, the better, right? So if I can list some stuff on Marketplace and get rid of it, that would be even better. All right, so yeah, we're like at an hour, so yeah. I hope if you had nothing to do this afternoon, you listened to me ramble. And uh, <laughs> thanks if you did. Um, again, hop over to Kim's channel. Uh, check out her giveaway. It'll be linked down below. And uh, yeah, drop your name in there. Tell her that you're a, you're a new sub and you're coming from my channel. You found her through me. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll win something. Fingers crossed. All right. Thank you for watching and have a good rest of your Wednesday.